guest that is about to join us, her name is Sierra Johnson. She is a licensed esthetician and is the owner of Waxing and Blading here in Nashville, Tennessee, which is a full body waxing salon that specializes in Brazilian waxes. She also specializes in semi-permanent brows. In order to ensure her clients have the best skincare products needed for you know, the down there in other places on your bodies. Uh, she created a product line called Supple Flower. And so Sierra is going to join us today to talk about this women owned business. Uh, Sierra, say good morning. Let me do a sound check for you, baby. Good morning. Good morning, Sierra. Can How you hear you? me? Can you see me? I'm good. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Awesome. I can hear you. Perfect. Okay. So I'm making sure that everything looks how I need it to look on TikTok and on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And it does. And thank you so much. Let me get Sierra's um, TikTok information up here, her website up here. So if y'all remember last summer when I was making them videos talking about come get my kitty cat wax with me, yeah. that's the only one to touch my supple flower, baby. Nobody <laughs> else. Can touch my supple flower, but Sierra, baby. I'm listening. I don't know about y'all, but uh, I know she's gonna make oh, sure she keeps right. the lady together. Okay, okay, I know that's right. <laughs> okay, so good morning, Sierra. Thank you for joining me today. Good morning, thank you for having me. You are welcome. So, I just read Sierra's bio, but of course, we're gonna ask her the same five questions that we ask every guest that come on. Um, so our first question for you, Sierra, is tell us about your business. What is your chosen industry um, or business and why did you choose said industry? Okay. Um, well, two businesses. One of them is the waxing and blading and it mm -hmm. is a full body waxing salon. Um, I specialize in Brazilians. And also I do the blading part, which is the semi-permanent makeup, which is the micro blading, ombre brows or micro shading, um, just to get up and go brows every day. And then I also have Supple Flower, which is my product line. That is a natural product line that helps with ingrown hair bumps, blemishes, and your delicate lady parts. Whether it's your underarms, your bikini area, you can still use it on your face as well. And I chose this industry because I've always been interest, interested in the beauty industry. I've kind of, if you want to talk to eight-year-old Sears, eight-year-old Sears would have said she wanted to do hair. Ashley, I wanted to be you. I wanted to do hair. Did you, girl? I, I did. never knew that. I did. That's my whole conversation. I'm going to be a beautician when I grow up. But I oh, can't do other people's hair. So I'm going re <laughs> to remove the hair. I'm going to remove the hair. And I'm going to let other people we take We need that, too. Yeah. We need that, too. Trust right. me. Right. You need to see me this week or next week ASAP, okay? I know, I know. It's time. <laughs> Don't be telling on my business. I'm Ooh. coming. Okay, I'll be quiet. <laughs> but I did not know that. So Sierra wanted to be a hairstylist, I but did. you couldn't do hair. I can't so. do hair. I said, well, <laughs> we all you fall into the other. Together. Yeah. You need the desire and the ability Absolutely. to execute. And it's okay. Absolutely. Perfect. Thank you so much for sharing that. So our second question is, as an entrepreneur, what challenges and obstacles or obstacles have you encountered that you know are specific to being a woman? And how did you overcome those obstacles? Um, and I hate to say this, but just being transparent and honest, I ran across like catty women sometimes. Um, I feel like that is one of the issues, um, that comes with, you know, being a woman and especially like in this particular industry. Um, mm -hmm. and it's not all the time. I have more good than bad. That's, let me throw that out there. I've run across more good and supportive women than I do catty women, but you do come across that as well. And honestly, overcoming that is just one of those situations where you really have to hold your head up high and not let no one else kind of take your um, vision. Because sometimes mm -hmm. your vision is going to be your vision and no one else can really see that but you. And then sometimes you share it with other people. I'm speaking from experience. I shared it with some other people when I first got started and I thought they were going to be like really supportive. And then it was like a, a shock. Like it wasn't, you know, because yeah. 
you even though you can be that person that's like, oh, I'm rooting women on and women power and girl, whatever you need, call me, I got you. And then when you run across somebody, it's not that's return. Not like, yeah, it kind of is like, yeah. oh, I didn't know, you know. <laughs> See, and the sad. Thank you for your transparency with sharing that. Um, after 17 years of being a licensed cosmetologist and going from a booth rental where I'm working under someone else to a salon suite where I'm working alone, but I have other people in the building that are suite mates yeah. to going to a booth rent situation where you're right next to people and then owning a salon. Mm -hmm. The sad part is the competitive jealousy. Now there's nothing wrong with being competitive because I want to get it. And then I want to encourage you to go get it too. Right. But what I know for a fact is what's for me is for me and what's for you is for you. So me helping encourage you as a fellow beauty industry, you know, tech, why is encouraging you going to hurt me? God already got mine set to the side. He already said, this is yours right here. Yeah. Yeah. So me trying to stop you or not encouraging you or not supporting or being jealous in the cattiness. What's the point? What's the point? And I just look at it like even in the, in the salon that I operate now, I intentionally look for teammates that do other things than I do. So their clients can eat off of my clients. My clients can eat off of their clients. I don't do braids. So why would I not want to help the braider build? I don't do wigs. So why would I not want to help the wig installer build? You get what I'm saying? Exactly. So for you to share that story, I've heard that dozens of times before that women have left salons and come to work with me because I just couldn't do the drama no more. I couldn't do the cattiness. I was yeah. looking for somebody to help me build and nobody wanted to help me. Yeah. We got to stop yeah. doing that, ladies. We do. And I named this series Woman to Woman in the tagline that I always say is I'm not Barbara and you're not Shirley because I'm not coming to you woman to woman <laughs> for the drama. <laughs> I'm coming to encourage and I want to share and I want everybody to hear about Sierra. First off, Sierra is my waxer and okay. I am a firm believer in everything she does because she's been waxing me for. Oh, at least like five years. It might Was be I pregnant? No, was no. I pregnant or was this after baby? It was after. So Dylan seven. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So okay. if I know for a fact that I've been laid butterfly on this table for seven years, I, yeah. of course I want y'all to know how great she is and her products work because I use, them. I don't encourage anything that I don't believe in. And y'all should know that for sure by now. Cause baby, I'm not on his selling stuff that I can't stand behind. So right. Yes, we've got to stop the cattiness and we've got to start back really encouraging and supporting one another for us to see some real results, I think. Mm -hmm. I agree. Thank you. So on our third question, Miss Sierra, uh, do you feel that being a business owner has allowed more space for you to embrace your womanhood? I do. So entrepreneurship, it just... You feel so free and you can just be as bossy as you want to be, you know, and I say that in the most humble way possible, but I'm yeah. just thinking that it brings out, um, so waxing blade would be seven in June. And so okay. I, I know I'm a totally different woman from when I first started to now, you really tap more into your womanhood of like who you are and who mm -hmm. you're becoming and then you get to share i get to share it with like so many other women that's my favorite yep. part honestly is just connecting with different women and yes watching each other grow you grow a lot and you grow a lot to your womanhood yeah yes i agree and i can only imagine seven years of business where your clients were seven years ago and where they are now and even when we look at your growth we're really proud of you really proud of you so yes that's that's some good information to share uh question number four how has entrepreneurship impacted your overall life oh girl 
<laughs> tell the truth. Tell the truth. Come on, tell the truth. But the truth. So it's been amazing, but then it's not always amazing. You know, it mm -hmm. it impacts you in so many different ways on so many different levels, mentally, um, physically, spiritually, like it's gonna impact your life across the board. However, mm -hmm. I wouldn't change it. I would not change it. I wouldn't change none of this. I'll go through all the struggles, y'all. It's a lot of struggles, yeah. okay? Do not think that you're coming into entrepreneurship and everything is going to be smooth sailing and you just going to start this business and everything is going to be great. It's going to be times mm -hmm. where, for me, I think it's kind of tough too with my family being away from here. Like I don't have any family here. So usually I'm going back and forth. Like I'm working five days a week, sometimes six days a week. And then there's something going on at home. And I'm like, oh, I'm trying to get here, trying to be there for everybody. And it's like, you can't do it all. Yeah, you're one person. <laughs> you're only one person. Yeah. And you're going to make some mistakes and that's okay. And you're going to beat yourself up about it. That's what a mental part mm -hmm. of me is going to beat yourself up about this and did I say the right thing with this client did I do the right thing with this person and it's okay the impact is going to be all over the place I feel like my answer was all over the place because the impact is all over the place listen and it's a direct it's, reflection this, this is how I feel <laughs> entrepreneurship like, has me all over the place out, but it's like <laughs> I don't know I don't know what is the impact I don't everything, everything all things everything <laughs> So. But I understand, I understand what you're saying. As an entrepreneur, you have the flexibility to go back home. There is no boss telling you, you don't have the PTO time. You know, mm -hmm. you, we need you here. There's no, we can't let you go. So it gives you the flexibility to be able to go back home and visit your family, to be yeah. there, to support your loved ones. But at the same time, because Sierra is waxing and blading, your business needs everything from you. Because right. without a Sierra, there is no business. So right. understanding that we still have to handle our obligations and responsibilities to our clients. We have to make mm -hmm. sure that they're taken care of. So when we come back, we still got a business to operate, right? Right. So it it I'm with you. I'm with you a thousand percent. We want to make sure that our businesses are successful as possible. But in mm -hmm. order for our businesses to be successful, we have to make sure that we're successful as individuals because otherwise one is going to potentially negatively affect the other. And I just wish I could get clients, customers. Y'all know we human, right? Like I understand that we operate a business, but Sierra is a person behind yeah. the name. Ashley is a person. Behind the yeah. name. Me and one of my girlfriends was talking yesterday. And um, she was just, I was telling her I'm taking off Tuesday. I just did an expo over the past weekend mm -hmm. in Huntsville. And so I did the women's expo. And then I also worked yesterday on Sunday. Look, I actually took clients. And, See? you know, just working. I just got back home last night. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, just been moving and grooving. And I was like, yeah, I'm taking Tuesday off. And Good so job. she was like, you know, I'm really happy that you are doing that and you taking the time off like I, I applaud you with that and I said it took a long time it's been seven years yeah to get to that point it takes something it took something dramatic to happen to me for me to say let me take care of myself more because yeah. you'll get wrapped up in it and you kind of will put yourself to the back seat you know on the back burner because you're yep. too busy trying to run your business and take care of everybody else and you don't take care of yourself so I just wanted to throw that out there. Like, take care of yourself. Absolutely. Too. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. And you really talking to me because uh, I be needing some time off. And then I look at them books and be like, oh, but I want to make all that money. I, I want to make, make all it. The money. <laughs> I want it all. I don't want half of it. I want all of it. Right. But Sierra is, she is a thousand percent correct. If you don't take the time for yourself now, voluntarily, your body will force you to take the time involuntarily. Mm -hmm. And then instead of just missing a Tuesday, how long are you going to be out? Is it going to be a week, two weeks, three weeks? So, yes, please take care of yourself. Please take care of yourself. Awesome. So your fifth question 
uh, Sierra, and this is probably my favorite question uh, that I ask everybody. If you could share three business related tips, what would they be? Okay. Um, I would say don't be afraid of failure. If you have mm -hmm. never read the book, Failing Forward, I think that's what it's called. Mm -hmm. it's something like that. Um, yeah, don't be afraid of that because everything is not going to go your way. Everything is not going to pan out the way that you think it's going to pan out and the way you may envision it in your head. You may have to pivot. That's the next pivot. You're going to yeah. always have to pivot. You got to figure out your next move. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then secondly, I would say is never stop educating yourself. It doesn't matter what mm. industry you're in. Continue to educate yourself. I don't care if you're taking, getting a new certification a refresher course or, you know, reading a, a book about it, whatever it is, keep educating because everything is going to keep evolving. I don't care what industry you're in. So keep right. up. Okay. Keep up, people, agree. Ketchup mustard. You gotta <laughs> ketchup mustard. Ketchup I want to use that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna borrow that. Thanks. Yeah. Ketchup mustard. That's cute. That's ketchup a t-shirt. Yeah, that's a t-shirt. That's a t-shirt. T-shirt. Don't put it on there. Okay. Another one is networking, and and that that's across the board. It, it don't matter. You could be in a drive-through line at Taco Bell, and you can give that person at the uh, counter. Your car. Hey, I wax brows right over here. If you need a uh, brow wax, yeah. or you know, it, it does. If you're in public somewhere, somebody may say, "Oh, I like your brows." Oh, girl, I do brows. There you go. I mean, it just it don't matter. Right. So, Sierra, yeah. you know what? This is not on here, but I'm gonna ask you a question just out of curiosity. Okay. So, being that you look, I'm I'm clutching my pearls. I'm. I see. So. Did it take you a long time to get comfortable doing Brazilian waxes? Like, was that, I know you had to become a licensed esthetician. Yeah. So they teach you all of that. But mm -hmm. what was it that made you say, ripping hair off of coochies, that's what I'm going to do. That's what what do. was it? <laughs> I'm going for it. I'm doing this. <laughs> Did it take you a long time to get comfortable and, and, why that? Let me ask you that. Yeah, why that? So, funny thing is, when I moved to Nashville, um, oof, it'll be 11 years next month. Oh, wow. Right. Yeah. When I moved, I did not know. I still wasn't in the beauty industry. I didn't go to school until I came here. I was in my late 20s when I moved to Nashville and decided to go to school um, and get a trade, this particular trade. And so... Gotcha. Me and one of the girls that wax meet here in Nashville at Old European Wax Center. Uh, uh -huh. That was my go-to. And we were just talking one day and we were talking about me going back to school in beauty industry. And I was telling her that. And we were just talking about aesthetics and stuff. And I, I don't know. I felt like, I was like, I can do this. You know, like I can do this. I'm so personable with people. I know how to make mm -hmm. people feel really comfortable i've always mm -hmm. wanted to do something where i knew i would like really connect with someone like other jobs i had they cool but i'm a personable person i needed something where i knew i would connect and i would and I'm, i've always been a girl's girl before people were saying a girl's girl you know what gotcha. i mean right so that was one thing too i'm like i just get to connect with so many women and make them feel great. You know, it's one of them situations. A, a Brazilian is one of them, like, that it's your own sassiness that you got to yourself. Like, you be feeling some type of way, but it's, it's for you. It's not, people don't even know you just got a Brazilian, but you sashaying through the mall because you just got a Brazilian. <laughs> so, Sierra, that, that video I made last uh, year, it was last year. Matter of fact, we're going to have to run it back again when it get hot outside. <laughs> While well, I came out that studio and put them panties in that purse baby because i'm out here yeah because i'm outside I'm Listen, <laughs> literally and figuratively we outside we um, uh, but it oh and your other question um it didn't okay at first when i first started like in training i was so nervous like <laughs> ready to start that first brazilian and anybody know when you worked at european wax you had pagers so you have a pager and they paid you when your client is there. So 
we're waiting, you know, we in training. It's a free service, you know, because they know we're trainees. So we are like nervous. And that page went off in my pocket, girl. I feel like a lump in my throat. Like I, I was so nervous. <laughs> but it took me, it didn't take, it was like a week. It was like maybe a week. And I was like, okay, yeah, I can do this. You know, you got to. Put your big girl now you be having whole conversations so girl how the kids been like oh, nothing well, it's happened. fine they good girl yeah <laughs> oh everybody they all right <laughs> let me quit listen the fact that i'm really treating this like what me and sierra be doing when i go to my appointments for real because we cut up the whole time let me be professional let me be serious Okay. Ooh, I needed that laugh. Thank you. Because you helped me be more comfortable today. Because as you were seeing, this morning did not go as planned. But it's okay, baby. We kept going. Um, awesome. So thank you for sharing all of those gems. Thank you for sharing your story. Now, before you go, we have a bonus fun question called, Would You Rather? And so I'm going to ask you your would you, uh, would you rather question. So, Sierra, would you rather work longer but fewer days a week or shorter but more days of the week? Um, I'm going to go with longer. Longer days but fewer of them? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, I, and for me, I guess it's because my – profession in particular it doesn't necessarily and i know people say this all the time it doesn't feel like work when you do what you love but, but a lot of truth. times yeah i i'm I, i'm locked in like a lot of times yeah. i'm at work and i could be there all day and and i'll be locked in but then it's like mm -hmm. but who i got like three days off in the road this week you know you know i'd rather yeah have more days off and just because once i'm there i'm there once I'm there and once I'm in the in the mood, yeah. I, let me go and get it done. But don't take, it. yeah, don't take me home and then be like, oh, right, be, be back at eight. Yeah, no. Let me go ahead and finish it up today so I can be off tomorrow. Exactly. I got you. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. I agree. I think it, I would pick the same as well. I yeah. Would. Perfect. So before we let Sierra go, I want to make sure that I plug again. Make sure that y'all follow Sierra. Number one, she posts hilarious TikToks on her TikTok, Sierra Johnson. So y'all need to make sure that y'all are following her on TikTok. Yes. Also, make sure that you follow Supple Flower, which is her brand, her um, skincare line, mm -hmm. her skincare line. And you can book Sierra or order product by visiting her website, which is scrolling on the bottom. So, Sierra, before you go, I want you to tell us about your product line, Supple Flower, and how they can, what it is, why they need it, okay. and where they can order it. Give us some detail on that. Okay, so with Supple Flower, you can order it at suppleflower.com. And I have a ingrown hair serum, which is right here. I have this mm -hmm. smaller yes, product plug. Right. And then I have bigger bottles as well. Okay. Um, and it's a roll-on bottle. And I chose a roll-on bottle because it lasts longer. Yes. So the last one, you don't have to worry about putting it in your hands, which is it's okay to put it in your hands. But just initially, it's just easier to just kind of take this on off. And roll mm -hmm. it on to your designated area. If you get an ingrown that pops up in your bikini area, you can just roll it onto that area and then you're good to go. Um, you can use the oil daily because I know as women, black, white, Hispanic, whatever, we all struggle with some type of um, ingrowns. I, I don't know any woman that has never had an ingrown in their life. If mm -hmm. you're doing some type of hair removal, whether you're waxing, shaving, nearing, you definitely need to take care of that skin as well. I, I say this all the time. We'll get something for our face, but we don't get anything for our bikini area and that mm -hmm. our vulva, that skin. We don't take care of that. We just leave that hanging. Yeah. So let's not leave her hanging. I mean, why would we do that? You know? <laughs> right. 
And then I have the cranberry body scrub. And you can use yes. this anywhere as well. And it's really moisturizing. And it benefits um, drawing toxins out of your pores and dedicating and targeting your um, bikini area and your skin and things like that as far as your ingrowns. So, Gotcha. Gotcha. And I personally would like to endorse Supple Flower. First of all, I've been using the scrub and I've been using the ingrown hair oil for mm -hmm. at least two years. Yeah, it's been two years. Two years and baby, when I tell first of all, if you are not, if you are a woman and you are not waxing, teach their own, teach. Listen, I'm not shaving, shaming. However, mm -hmm. the more frequently you wax, the smaller, more finer that hair becomes. And Absolutely. you don't have to go as frequently. The ingrowns that I used to get when I was shaving compared to when I'm waxing cut down drastically. Yeah. That itchy, when it get ready to grow back, baby, ain't nobody got time to be out here trying to yeah. scratch on the low or pat on the low. We're not doing that, okay? So getting waxing to me is more convenient. It lasts longer. It gets better results. And I just think it's safer, too, because yeah. shaving can be dangerous if we know, if you know. And so then to come and, oh. I'm scared of putting Nair down there. Nair is, that's my supple flower. That's my delicate supple flower. I need to <laughs> treat her nice. Yeah. So when I use the scrub and I use the oil in conjunction with my waxing, chef's kiss. Yeah. Sierra keeps my yeah. meow meow together. I'm going to say it like that, okay? Here so y'all make sure that before the end of the day, y'all definitely follow Sierra on both Supple Flower as well as her personal, which is Sierra Johnson, because she's funny and we are a woman supporting another woman. Okay. And make sure that y'all go visit her website. If you are in the Nashville, Tennessee area and you need waxing, I endorse. She has my full support and confidence. Um, yeah. And make sure that y'all order some product. Is there anything else you want to plug before you go, Sierra? Um, I think that is it. Okay. Thank you so much. You are welcome. So thank you, Sierra, for joining me. I am going to drop you so you can go on about your Monday. I hope you have an amazing Monday. And girl, I'm going to make an appointment in a minute, okay? All right, then. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, Sierra. Bye.